So I'd like to tell you about a patient I recently met. We'll call her Susie. So Susie joined us at Optimal Bone Health MD after undergoing a frustrating situation with her doctor and with her diagnosis of osteoporosis. Now, Susie is pretty young. She's in her early 50s, but she's already had a fracture. And this makes her relatively unique because most people are trying in their 50s and 40s to avoid the fractures that are likely to occur later on in life, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. But Susie had already had a fracture in her spine. And in fact, it was her second fracture. So when she went to her doctor, her doctor was very insistent, in fact, maybe a little bit on the bullying side, to take a drug called Evenity. And Evenity is a newer drug on the market. So like most people I know that are recommended drugs like this, Susie went to go do her research. Now, Susie decided to do a lot of stuff on her own before taking this drug, which is sometimes fine, depending on the situation. And for Susie, she decided to clean up her diet. She decided to start eating a vegan diet. She decided to start doing yoga, to start doing Pilates, and to do all the things that she could find on the internet that would help her with supplements and everything else. But yet she was still getting worse. So she comes to us, she has this story. She says, my doctor is now threatening me that I have to take this drug or he's gonna stop seeing me more about that later. But we bring her in, we get her into the program. And one of the things we always do with everybody is to work them up completely, figure out why they're losing bone, talk about how to reverse those causes of bone loss, and then create a comprehensive plan to help them go on the right path to improving their bone health. Now with Susie, she has a relatively complex picture. Do we use drugs with her or not? You'll have to wait till the end to find out. But as a specialist in bone health who really specializes in natural bone health, improving bone health as naturally as possible. This is pretty rare that we would even consider using a drug. In fact, I wrote a book about this. You should check it out. There's a link in the video below. You can actually download the free ebook or buy it on Amazon. There are so many things that we can do, but once you create a comprehensive plan, that discussion of drugs should always be had. So, I wanna talk about this drug in this video because there are some misconceptions about this drug. I see a lot of fear around it. Some of it's probably valid, but some of it's probably not. So stick with me if you've been recommended this drug or you know anybody that has and you wanna learn more about it. We're gonna get through the research, some of the early research and our experience with the drug so far, what we think about it, and ultimately what we did with Susie. All right, so whenever we are evaluating a drug uh, for our own patients, I always wanna go back to the original literature and look to say, okay, is this a reasonable drug to use? Do the benefits outweigh the risk? What are the studies showing? Um, and again, is this something that I wanna use for my patients? As somebody who focuses on natural solutions, the answer to that question is generally no, but there are circumstances where this is the case. So the study we're gonna talk about today, there's actually kind of three big ones on, on Avenity, but uh, the study that we're gonna talk about today is uh, one of the studies that led to the FDA approval. So this is a 2016 study, and as most studies that lead to FDA approval would go, this is a, a really big trial. So this is thousands of people, placebo-controlled, double-blinded, and industry-funded. So the industry-funded part I bring up because there is some um, you know potential bias there, but again, when a drug is being uh, considered for approval, for uh, FDA approval, um, these trials are always gonna be uh, funded by the drug companies. That's how they get them there. Uh, there's no other way to fund them. And so I just say that because it's something worth considering and it's nice to see that there are other studies out there and we'll, we'll chat about those. So anyway, how does this drug work? So Avenity works by utilizing components of the immune system. So this is a synthetic antibody. So your body makes antibodies, but this is a synthetic antibody that attacks this protein called sclerostin. Sclerostin is a protein that's made by osteocytes. And you might've heard me talk about osteoblasts and osteoclasts before. Osteocytes are kind of a third type of cell that are in bones, but they used to be osteoblasts. So osteoblasts become osteocytes once they get trapped in the bone that they make. What's cool about osteocytes is that they're actually sort of the, the conductors of the cell. So they secrete proteins and they are communicating with osteoclasts and other osteoblasts 
to really uh, dictate the um, uh, speed of which uh, the bone is being metabolized. So it does a lot of stuff. Uh, also helps with, uh, has its own little like system, kind of like a vascular system uh, where it's running you know, uh, uh, information and also waste through these little channels, like little sewage channels in the bones. Really, really cool cells. Um, anyway, so they secrete sclerostin. Sclerostin communicates and has a receptor on both the uh, osteoclasts and the osteoblasts. So it's pretty cool. So this drug then goes in, binds to this thing and kind of shuts it down. The importance to that is that it will shut down both osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So it'll have an impact on both sides of bone metabolism, which is good um, as long as it's in the right direction. And we'll talk about that. All right, so let's go back to this study. So uh, like I said, big study, over 7,000 women, T-scores of negative 2.5 to 3.5, and they used this drug for 12 months. Uh, this is a monthly injection. It has to be done at your doctor's office. And uh, again, it is done for 12 months, and you cannot continue the drug after 12 months. There is some kind of continuation, which is a topic for another day. In this study, they actually transitioned these patients onto Prolia, um, and we could talk more about that. Uh, but we're going to focus on the first 12 months of the study, and this was the, again, Avenity or Romosozumab versus placebo. So right out of the gate, they start talking about the results. So the, the decrease of relative risk in vertebral fractures, which uh, I'm not going to get into the statistics today. If you want to hear me talk about relative versus absolute risk, look at my bisphosphonate video. Uh, or um, I also talk about it in my in the Prolia video. Um, so uh, essentially, they show this big relative risk reduction. Now, the nice thing is in this study, in the abstract, they actually put the numbers. So even if this is all you had, you can still tell this, that the difference was not as big as it sounds. So they had a 73% reduction in relative risk uh, with the drug. And that's because there were 0.5% percent fracture rate uh, in the uh, affinity group and 1.8 in the placebo group. So that's actually a 1.3 percent absolute risk reduction because uh, the group sizes were about the same, uh, but a, a very large relative risk reduction, uh, again, because of the frequency of the fracture. Now, that's vertebral fractures. What's interesting, and I'll get to this in a little bit more detail, but this was not necessarily true with hip fractures, and this is something that I definitely see uh, as misrepresented or misstated uh, with this. They also talk in the results in general about the um, adverse events, and so they say that there were no cardiovascular events, osteoarthritis, or cancer uh, that were a difference between the two groups, um, and that cardiovascular events is an important one. They did see one atypical femur fracture in two cases of osteonecrosis of the jaw in the affinity group. So this drug is not unlike the other drugs, proli and bisphosphonates, that can cause this, although the rates seem to be lower in this drug than the others. Another thing that's important to note about this study is that they actually put women, all women, on vitamin D. And if their vitamin D level was low, then they actually gave them a loading dose of 60,000 international units and then put them on between 600 and 800 IU a day of vitamin D and up to 1,000 milligrams of calcium. So they were already on this intervention of calcium and vitamin D. Now, granted, this was in both placebo and uh, drugs. So the difference wouldn't be related to those. And again, when we talk about the benefits, we see this big 73% reduction in um, relative risk in vertebral fractures. But let's talk about the non-vertebral fractures. So non-vertebral fractures can mean, can mean a few different things, but in general, in these studies, they're looking for hip fractures. Now, what they found with hip fractures is that the difference was, it doesn't seem that different. So it was 1.6% in the drug group and 2.1% incidence of hip fracture in the control group. And that is 0.5%, which is actually not that different from the absolute reduction risk change in the vertebral fracture side. But when you do the statistics here, that absolute risk reduction or relative risk reduction, however you look at it, um, doesn't meet statistical significance. So real quick aside on what that means is that we can say that there was a trend toward improvement in fracture risk, but that the study didn't have enough patients in it to actually show beyond the doubt that this was by chance, that this is actually a real finding. So it has a trend, but it is not significant. Therefore, we can't really make the claim that uh, we should be using it to help reduce femur fractures, uh, specifically femoral neck fractures. So interesting because I hear this misstated often in people that are talking about this drug and the difference between its impact on spine uh, versus femur. 
So what about other things? Well, we've always talked about bone mineral density. We talk about bone turnover markers. So let's, let's hit both of those. The bone density changes for avinity are very significant. So they, in this study, the spine went up by over 13% in 12 months. That's big. Um, it went up by 6% in the femoral neck. So that's also big, right? So these are big changes in BMD. And that's why I think this drug is very popular. Uh, and, then, and I'll tell you another reason why it's very popular. And then the biomarkers. So the bone biomarkers are, again, CTX and P1MP. So these are osteoclast or breakdown markers and osteoblast or bone building markers. And um, you can see in this graph here that the P1MP or the bone building marker really shot up out of the gate. So it really went in that first month, it was up by up 150%. And then it starts to come down. And then it sort of like, I don't know how it does this up and down. But anyway, by the 12 month mark, it's actually negative. And this is a big point that I'll come back to. The CTX or breakdown marker drops. And this is kind of what we would expect to see in something that's building bone mineral densities, we have to slow down bone resorption. Uh, now, what's interesting about this graph is that when you look at what happened at the 12-month mark, and then you can see what happened when they went on Prolia, it bottomed out, right? And this is why this drug potentially would have less of an impact on CTX or breakdown because we want some breakdown. Uh, this drug had less of an impact than did Prolia or with bisphosphonates. Um, and uh, this is why this is at least on our radar something to consider using because we don't want to decimate bone turnover, although you did see that osteonecrosis of the jaw in a typical femur fracture uh, in the risks. The other risk that they mentioned here that they don't talk about in the results section, and, and I went digging for it, was this risk about cardiovascular risk. And this is sort of the big fear around this drug. When you look it up online, you'll hear people say it causes heart attacks. Well, this trial didn't show any there was another big study. There's two really. One is called the ARCH trial. The other one's called the FRAME study. And uh, I'm going to dig into those on another uh, talk. But let's just summarize that to say that they both showed improvement in bone. Only one showed an increased risk of cardiovascular events. So hard to say that if one out of three trials shows an increased risk of heart attack and stroke, uh, that this is something that we should really be considered uh, to be a risk. Um, still something to keep on our radar when we're considering it for people. Have they had an event lately? Uh, but ultimately, I think that this is probably overstated based on all of these data. Before we get to what we did with Susie, um, I just want to point out that Susie found us on this channel. And if you want to help other people find us on this channel, do me a big favor, click the subscribe button. By clicking the subscribe button, you will notify the algorithm of YouTube that this is worth watching. Um, also sign up for notifications, all these things, sharing it, liking it, all those things, notify the algorithm that this material is worth watching and that when people search osteoporosis content, they'll be shown these videos. So help me to help them by clicking those things, please. Also, um, remember that if you want to learn more about what we do, the things that helped her to get to where she was, look for the link of the masterclass, our free masterclass in the description below. Also, there's a link uh, where you can download our free ebook. Uh, and these are all, again, things that we are putting out there to help people to learn more about how to handle uh, bone health and to make good decisions around how to improve their bone health. All right, now, so let's get to what we did with Susie. All right, so when Susie came to us, again, she was absolutely mortified of what was gonna happen to her. Uh, she didn't wanna take these drugs. She had so much fear around avinity and was really upset that her doctor was trying to bully her into taking these drugs. So we did what we usually do, uh, which is to take a look and to figure out, okay, Susie, why are you losing bone? Um, so we do our lab panel, um, and for her, we also did some additional testing, some functional testing on her gut. She had kind of a long history of gut dysfunction, and we found a lot of things to work on. So we start with the foundation. So we started with her from a nutrition perspective. We had her keep track, and it, and it was very apparent early on that when she adopted a plant-based style of eating, um, she had essentially just gotten rid of all protein. And I see this very commonly in uh, women who are kind of being misled by, I think, bad advice. Um, and they essentially stop eating animal protein and they stop eating all protein for the most part uh, because they're really just worried about alkalizing their blood. Um, and so if you haven't seen my video on that, please take a look at that. I think that the concept is uh, very much blown out of uh, proportion and that really we don't need to focus on alkalizing our blood. We need to focus on getting the right macronutrient and mineral and micronutrient composition. And that is generally going to be by eating a protein forward diet that is grounded in good quality animal products 
products. And then we talk about her lifestyle. We put her on a more aggressive program having to do with more resistance, obviously respecting her previous injuries, but getting her some really good advice, some one-on-one -on -one advice that's gonna to help to put her in a good starting point and then it's gonna help her to move forward comfortable with the idea that she is going to start stressing her bones so that we can build her bones. We also helped her with her sleep, even giving her a path forward helped her with her anxiety and they put her on a custom targeted supplement plan that is based on biomarkers, not just a Google search. Now, what's interesting about Susie too is that she was already on hormone replacement therapy. So when we test our biomarkers and sometimes with functional testing, we can see you know, what are the blood levels like and the research is very clear on the blood levels that will impact uh, bone for all three hormones. So for progesterone, testosterone and estrogen, they all three will impact uh, bone at different blood levels. We can test those levels. Um, and then we just made some adjustments to her hormone replacement therapy. And now we're treating, you know, all her symptoms that she were already treating with HRT, but now we're going to help improve her bone as well. We also recommended some peptides for her. Um, she needed to put on some muscle. So some peptides that are aimed at improving muscle mass, uh, helping her to be a little bit more anabolic. So she'll build both muscle and bone. And then we have this conversation about medications. Now, we are very fortunate as a physician-led program, we can talk about drugs, we can prescribe drugs if we need to, that's how we do uh, hormone replacement. Obviously, something like Avenity, we can't do injections through our nationwide telehealth platform, uh, so we have to require uh, her to see another doctor for that. Um, but for her, is Avenity the answer? Well, I think that for her, it's not an unreasonable thing. Because this is what I hear from my doctor friends and my colleagues who are in true uh, insurance-based traditional fracture liaison services, which is that if somebody is currently fracturing, having repeated fractures, Avenity is the fastest tool to stop the fracturing from continuing. Now, is that her? Well, I think it it could be. You know, I'm very concerned about her bones. So one of the things we did recommend too was to get a REMS, and we have a video coming out on this very soon. And a REMS is an ultrasound study that helps us to look at bone quality, but we already know that she's had fractures. So I think this will help, but I think we're still gonna be in the, the boat where she's probably gonna need to do something aggressive. And whether it be a Venity or one of the other anabolic drugs like Forteo or Temlos, I think it'd be very reasonable and that the benefit of these drugs would probably outweigh the risk because I just don't know that she has the time time to wait for a natural approach. Natural approaches absolutely work and we absolutely do them. And again, if you want to read about that, you can look for the link for our ebook in the description below. But sometimes people don't have time to wait. And so in those circumstances, it's not unreasonable to use drugs. Everybody's different and this is a challenging conversation. But after we built this pyramid, Susie decided that she didn't want to use the drugs and that she didn't want to go back to her doctor who was bullying her to use the drugs. So I encouraged her to uh, get a second opinion, someone locally, and she has the, the, the fortunate situation to be able to do that. Not everybody can. Um, but whenever a doctor is bullying somebody and they have another option, I would encourage them to look for another option. Uh, but again, our system is not set up so that you can do that in, in all markets. So she's going to go talk to somebody else. She's going to start on all the things that we just talked about. And we're going to set her in the right direction. She's not starting on drugs yet. Maybe she will. We'll see. I think she's going to do great. She is so happy. And at minimum, she is on the right path. And her anxiety and fear have been, for the most part, relieved because she now has a plan. So if you're looking for a plan, please consider reaching out to us. All the stuff in the description below this video, the masterclass, the ebook, um, all of our other social media outlets. Just reach out. Let us know how we can help you. Leave comments. Leave questions. If you enjoy content like this, let us know that. If you have a topic that you want us to talk about, please let us know that too. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. It is people that are watching this video and liking it and subscribing and sharing that make it all possible. So thanks again.